Hi guys, this is Amnal, and we are back with Gwent. Uh, we are going to continue our keg opening. I'm going to open uh, uh, 60 more, because around 100, 120 kegs is about... Uh, is more or less the amount you should get uh, after the first month of play, which uh, by which I mean 30 days or so in which you have done your dailies, meanwhile doing all the uh, challenges. Uh, which I believe net you uh, 12 or 13 uh, things total, uh, 13 or so kegs total, uh, three kegs every day from uh, from your da uh, from your dailies, uh, well and uh, three and and a bit like three and a half depending of, of how you are uh, how uh, the random part of your of your daily rewards. Uh, turns out to be so if you end up getting uh, scraps and dust of course that will be uh, well closer to free but if you end up getting a lot of uh, ore uh, early on then probably closer to four per day uh, then go uh, level rewards which are going to add up to you know several kegs probably in, in a month you would be at around level 30 or so so that's probably about around 10 15 kegs and uh, you should definitely start playing ranked as soon as you hit level 10. And uh, even with with the most basic decks, uh, like the, the ones I've discussed at, at the end of those starter deck tutorials, which are basically starter decks with a few commons and rares uh, stacked on top, you should be easily able to get to around level 11, uh, rank 11. Uh, I, no problem within a month of play or so and well you will get uh, better cards uh, throughout that time anyway uh, season rewards of course do not apply so what we're going to do first is take a look since i reached level three we're going to take a look how much uh, um, scraps i would get if i were to mill all the spare cards so this shows 480 but uh, since there are quite a few uh, cards that have uh, mm, oh, right, th like those. So here, for example, I would uh, mill another. What is it? Uh, four, six, seven, and nine. Nine cards, uh, which is thirty-five. Uh, thirty-five scraps. So that would probably be around mm, between all of those. That would be around hundred and fifty more. 170 uh, let's call it so that's around six, 650 scrap that's uh not all that's impressive but that's only you know first 60 kegs uh, you are still filling up the, your rows and commons so uh, we'll get back to it uh, once we finish all those 60 and see how the amount of our possible scrap increases i vote i use the, the, the ore to buy up to uh, 240 so we'll have a nice cut of number at uh, 180 and shop open keg yes i would well that's a good start all right so we have <laughs> It's, it's a bit uh, of a weird one, since those two are, of course, starting cards. We'll get Wild Boar of the Sea. Uh, that is a, a very specific card. You strengthen the unit to your left and damage the unit to your right. There are some very interesting combos you can, you can uh, do with it. Um, but it's, it's a, a bit of a higher uh, level of deck building than what we uh, want to talk about in the starter deck so uh, if you are just starting uh, you should probably rather avoid this one uh, uh, if there are better better options it's it, it can be good but it's uh, well it's really hard to tell at the moment if it's going to be competitive because it's uh, it's very early in 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 the patch and so on and so forth Well, look at that. Uh, so, Eskil or Yarp and Zygrin. I'm definitely going to pick Yarp and Zygrin because, uh, well, I rarely use the Witchers as it is. So, uh, and I definitely want to uh, get a proper Dwarven deck, and he is a really great uh, 
silver for for the dwarves. Dwarves are actually a, a pretty easy deck to 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 to, uh, to gather. You just need a handful of uh, dwarven silvers that are pretty obvious. Uh, two or three uh, rares such as Ilthin, I would say, uh, legendaries. I mean, like Ilthin and Yap and Zigrin, and they are more or less good to go. The pitfall is, however. Uh, that while um, the dwarves are pretty straightforward, the rest of Skeletal re really isn't. So uh, I'm, I believe there will be quite a few people who, uh, having played dwarves and liked them, uh, being beginners, uh, will um, find themselves out of their depth uh, when uh, if they try to continue, like. In, Focusing on Skoyatel because the uh, rest of, of their decks are not near, are, are very weird, like the, probably the weirdest decks uh, of all in the game. Well, we have two of each. Let's get and the warship. Wow! <laughs> we are on a roll. Alright, so Necromancy. Banish a unit from either graveyard and boost your highest ally by its power. Pretty self explanatory. Banish means remove from the game. Uh, I cannot think of. Uh, no. mm. I mean, there are ways to, 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 to use it, but. You can't think of any, any great ones, because uh, in Skellige you definitely don't want that, because you want to, to um, basically... Um, uh, well, I guess it can be attack against Skellige, and I guess in some place with a lot of like brave units or things like that, something that gets you more basic strength. I, I can not think of anything I would actually want to, to, to include it in, so I would... I would Rather stay away. Uh, I will have to think about uh, it because it uh, it has a really really nice premium card. But well, this one isn't premium, so we're going to go with Water Hack that allows us to uh, upon deployment spawn one of uh, three special cards and play it, uh, which means Clear Skies, Lacerate, or Torrential Rain. Very useful. Uh, a bit of a tool toolbox of a card. Wow! <laughs> uh, Alright, so Ma uh, Magda Bracke. Magda Bracke was uh, staple in early closed beta. I, I mean, early after New got like the, the two patches ago, like everything around him for a reason. Now, it, I, I don't think so. I think people got over him, although he, uh, she, I, I think, I believe it is, hasn't been changed all that much. Uh, still, a, and uh, probably the, the the other thing is that there there has been a lot more uh, a lot of cards added uh, that can uh, fill the, the the similar role in uh, for example Skellige and so on. So um, I will still take take her because uh, it should be useful in uh, in, in decks uh, in control decks or decks that require you to. Uh, Get your enemies to the equal number of uh, to the equal strength on when uh, in the row or things like that. Uh, good to have, but uh, this is not not that good in my opinion. All right, well we. Just keep going. We haven't had a single rare cake, uh, <laughs> I, I don't think. No, the, the one with uh, war longships. All right, so we have an all. We have all year. All year, this I think the only non skelly card that has veteran at the moment. Veteran uh, triggers at the end, uh, at the beginning of second round and third round. So it triggers twice if there are three rounds, uh, rather than two, and uh, he would resurrect. And be weakened by two. So, for example, if we played him in round one, 
and he died or he doesn't, he didn't, well, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and uh, at the start of the second round, he will come back with five strength. And uh, if nothing changes, he will come back with uh, three strength in the last round. Uh, yes, he uses, uh, he got kind of overshadowed by uh, Morgvag. A similar card for Skellige, but... Uh, well, uh, Mogra got a uh, good uh, hit. Like, all, all those cards are good. Uh, this is a, uh, used to be a very, very much a staple card for Skellige. Now, not so much because uh, it doesn't add any, any strength to, to the unit. It used to add two strength and uh, it used to uh, outright play this unit on the board. So, this now is a very low tempo play. I mean, it's a zero tempo play unless you uh, are able to. Utilize the discard a bit, and the discard bit is uh, uh, well. This is basically uh, from going uh, from being a card that almost every Skellige deck runs like two months ago. It it, it now is going to be mostly used in decks uh, discard Skellige decks, and probably not all of them either. But uh, yeah, it's 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 a it's a good it's a decent card, and this is uh, uh, for Squirtel. Uh, it just pulls a special card from your deck. Uh, some people are not uh, big fans of this, but uh, I think with in a deck focused on uh, special cards, it's 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 going to be uh, to 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 be a very useful uh, addition. Uh, I think I actually I, I think I want to, to to play a little bit of Skellige now when I think about it. Uh, so let's let's start with Nature's Gift. I haven't played much of skill again uh, in the close beta. Beta. Maybe I will try them now. All right. So uh, we already have all three kings got. So let's get a Kimara. There we go. Oh, wow. I haven't as much as touched to this one. Uh, one Necker Wario, probably one, two or three in, for example, a Fogler deck. Um, or even in a... Uh, and, well, Necker deck. Um, this guy is... Uh, so he works well with the... He can work well with Wild Boar of the Sea. The, the, the thing that strength uh, unit on, on the left and damage unit on the right, so you can uh, mitigate that that loss by simply using this. Uh, so he can be useful. Uh, we don't have... Oh, actually, well, what I'm looking for, he's, it's it's a premium card, so we are definitely going to take the premium one. Uh, Siege Tower is uh, something... It's a bit weird because it's... Uh, Somewhere in between two um, ways of playing Northern Realms, Armor deck or Machine deck. I'm not sure if it will find its place in either of those, but uh, shall wait and see. I mean, I, I, I'm not uh, too enthusiastic about the uh, current uh, state of uh, Siege Towers. Mm, okay, so we have three of those already. Uh, because we got the uh, the premium ones, uh, no premiums, no. Okay, so those guys. We discussed them earlier for a reveal deck. And wow, <laughs> well, we got scorched the meal. Mm, well, we have three full sets of each now. Yeah, so we are going to 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 reach that point in which. We will continue getting uh, duplicates and a lot of them. Hmm. Okay, so well, we got Regis. Regis is, is a bit of a weird card. It, it is like this version of Regis has been implemented uh, just with this patch, and there hasn't been a card like that. He's neutral, but he, he uses a consume mechanic that is, uh, well, characteristic of monsters. And um, as you can see, he looks at it. 
three random bronze units from the opponent's deck, and you can consume one to to well, and consuming uh, gets the the strength of that unit uh, absorbed. Uh, he will he will be boosted by that, and well, uh, puts that unit in the graveyard. So it can be a nice uh, counterplay to to some strategies that uh, rely heavily on. Uh, uh, having a certain amount or amounts of of bronze cards, which are quite a few, so uh, not not a terrible thing. So it should be interesting to to look at him. But I, I would definitely go with Tibor before Regis Fire Vampire, and the Immolarith is of course a starting character. Mm. Definitely a necker. For some reason, we don't have any neckers. Uh, we discussed all of it. Lacerate is a good card, but you rarely use more than one. So. When you, you used to use like two when uh, neckers were all the rage, but uh, now not so much. Alright. Uh, what do we have here? So immunity boost, I think it would be hard to, to, to fit more than one. Savage Bell, let's, let's get the Savage Bell. All the enemy units enter. Uh, are being, uh, enter game are being damaged and uh, how that works uh, if you have for example two savage bears or and they have strength two or one savage bear and they try to play a card with one strength uh, that card will die and if there are any effects uh, associated with deployment uh, those effects will not fire mm -hmm. Well, I guess we can get the second damage team shackles. Should pr probably uh, taken one of the others for for easier milling. I really cannot uh, see myself using more than one damage team shackle. Uh, maybe a second tremor, but we'll probably get it from uh, you know run random bits. Just like we have used up all our luck earlier. Uh, well, we don't have Clan Demon Pirates, uh, Pirate Captains. Uh, when you discard the cards, uh, they uh, lose themselves wherever they are. So, yeah, uh, it's, it's good to have one or two in your discard deck. Yes, the navigator. Mm, well, we don't have that one yet, so let's go for it. And it's it's a it's a premium as you see. I think we have like one of those, or maybe two, but yeah. Huh, <laughs> prize winning cow. I don't think we have that. So, <laughs> and this is this is the very funny card. Uh, back in the early days of Witcher Three, there has been like a several cow cows in the starting location in the game, and uh, so some crazy people realized that you can farm those cows for experience, and I've been doing that <laughs> a lot. Uh, so. Uh, like in in one of the early patches, the project red in uh, basically uh, made it so that if cow was, uh, if cow gets attacked, a chort will spawn, and chort was well, if if you were for example at level two in that area, the chort was level thirty or something like that. So uh, and this is uh, noted to that uh, that situation, and uh, you're going to spawn basically. Um, Retaliation means when it, when it is damaged, and death wish uh, when it dies. So, uh, 
of course, uh, as you can imagine, there are, for example, ways to boost it. You, you put a swallow potion and you, for example, put it next to that wild boar of the sea and you have uh, shorts for days. So it's, it can be a, a fairly interesting card. And uh, if it survives to the end of the round, then short, uh, due to death wish, uh, is going to spawn uh, for the next round. So it's it, it can be quite useful. And reinforce ballista, I guess. Hmm. So, thanks, Siri. You basically understand. You, you put her. She's she can be played as loyal or disloyal. So on either yours or enemy side of the uh, of the board. If you play her as the Slayer, uh, the start of every turn she will uh, boost herself by one, and when the opponent passes, uh, she will return to your side of the ball. So, for example, you play her first round, uh, nothing happens to her beyond that, and uh, opponent passes after f uh, t five turns, she's going to be eleven, and is going to return to you. Uh, you can also play her. Uh, on your side of the board and uh, just make a nine out of her. Uh, it's an interesting card, but it's it's not very good. That's that that's its problem. Uh, maybe it's uh, with, with this addition because that that's new. The fact that you can in a bind player uh, on your side of the board. Maybe it will get a bit better. But I mean, uh, nine strength still though without abilities is is, is just a bad thing. And this is a special card, spawn a base copy of the last enemy your opponent played from their hand. This is very reactive and very unreliable. I guess, well, you don't know what your opponent is going to spawn. You, it can be, I guess, used with, in some situations with an operator. You, you, you give them a, a copy of your bronze unit that you want a lot of. And uh, like I, I guess Queen's Guard, uh, they play it just like that because well, why not? And you, 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 uh, you use it to to get yet another copy. But the uh, thing is that now with the implementation of uh, Mulligan, uh, uh, after every round, uh, it's more likely than not that they will Mulligan that card, and well, uh, that's about it. And if you are basically at the at the mercy of your enemy to, to that they will do something something useful something uh, well hopefully a powerful silver card that fits your playstyle uh, very unlikely and Brewers is is a staple uh, monster card you should get a Brewers here. Okay, are right, to the adept. I really, really hope I haven't missed any of the premium cards. Wow! It's so impossible to miss if you are distracted. Uh, well, Blood Carol in row. This is this is a multi-image card that should make them, of course. Hmm, well, definitely Axeman here. Uh, we discussed Lacerate and, and the fact that you don't really need that many. Well, alright, so there goes a third Dibiritium Shackle. Uh, well, in this case, let's, let's get another Necker. Well, we don't have any smugglers, so whenever a unit appears on your opponent's side, boost self by one. So if if uh, an enemy continues to, to uh, spawn cards, uh, this guy will get stronger and stronger. Uh, you can also boost him by playing spies, uh, for example. Mm. So, 
Yeah, uh, and it should be useful again. It used to be like six, I believe, and now not so much. Uh, he should be useful against uh, if also things that a uh, like blue stress commando decks that uh, well uh, spawn a lot of commandos or foglet decks that spawn a lot of foglets or so, well some on them really but yeah all things such as uh, Arahas behemoth decks and so on and so forth or harpy yeah. There are, there are a lot of archetypes that uh, this can be useful against if they if they become popular. Come on. Uh, well, I guess don't banner light cavalry. Come on, we need some legendaries. Mm, Imperial brigade here. I guess Trapper. So Trapper also can be used uh, with that uh, card because uh, that Fireball Trap is spawned on the opposite row, counts as a, as a unit. So, yeah, Hawker Smuggler can be a very powerful card in some situations. Wow. And uh, yeah, we don't have Riot Dragoons, uh, Riot Vanguard, so we're going to take one. So this is for Francesca. Whenever you mulligan a card, he gets bigger. One of the weakest cards, I would say, of this type. Mm, well, I guess Riot Brigade. I still think this is a ridiculously uh, weak card. Promotion, definitely potential promotion. Uh, oh, damn it. Okay, uh, you know what? I will get into options for a sec. Settings, audio. Temeria. That's what matters. Let's slower it a bit. Just on an options that it's it's really bad and well, those things get annoying. So what we have? Uh, almost thirty to go. Twenty nine. Got I believe what two legendaries. So it's. We got four Alia and uh, Alia, uh, Alia. So it's, <laughs> it's interesting that you destroy an ally and damage an enemy by uh, the destroyed ally, ally's power. So it's of course good against spies, especially for example fake Siri. He would uh, uh, he would be deadly against that, but uh, the situations may be f few and far between. Still, an interesting option. Yeah, let's get the same lacerate. Now for more. Oh, yeah, so this is a premium, let's get premium. Well, there goes our third lacerate. Um, uh, I guess I'll run out in rush. So. And really, no one is going to play three other run out in rushes. It's, it's preposterous. Oh, look at that. A second uh, premium spotter, definitely going for it. Nazika Standard Bearer, uh, you boost one ally uh, or revealed unit in your hand by free and clear weather from the row. So, yeah, useful stuff to be able to clear weather in other ways than with uh, clear skies. Wow. 
Well, I guess we are getting siege towers. Oh, well, second mark the Bracken. Sad face. Uh, well, third Savage Bear. So that's 50 scrap that's marked the Bracken. Pocket Smuggler, of course. Oh, oh Arak has been healed now, yeah. 2-2. Two, two. Hmm, well, of course, a Necker. Come on, legendaries are overdue. Hmm, another Siege Tower. Okay, so it's Fandriga. Uh, draw a card, including gold and discard card from your hand. Uh, so you're useful for your discard deck or Odin. Move to a random row and boost units uh, on it by one. Uh, it's never fun, particularly fun of this card. It can be useful with uh, some versions of uh, Blue Stripes Commander deck, but uh, because it will stagger the your units in just a little bit, so it can have it. It can have its uses, but I think I will go with Spanriga. He's he's a not always uh, an include in discard decks, but uh, yeah, I would say it's not a bad one either. Well, doesn't really matter. I should probably just pick an echo for easier, uh, easier milling. And we get a set of our behemoths. So as you can see, we are very close to, to, to having full sets of all the cards, uh, all the rares and uh, and commons, and that's in around 100 uh, case open, so uh, you should be in that position, as I said, in under a month of, of series play, uh, and under, you know, 20 PV, 25 days of actually playing the game. Uh, so Tyler or Marigold, so Tyler is uh, our uh, or spy for Northern Realms and Regal's health and damage all units on a row by half of their power. Uh, can, can be very useful. I'm not sure if I am a greatest fan of it. I think I will just get a stable tower. tower. What else would I put in Northern Realms? Uh, uh, bo both are good options. Uh, yes, I will just try out Marigold uh, Hailstorm, I guess. Wow! Mm. Mm. Oh, don't have a full set of either. Uh, let's start with Ballistas. Okay, so that's a, a nice animation of uh, Vicavara Medic, definitely going for it. Alright, so Res, uh, legendaries, we get Saskia, order summon the units to the random row. Uh, basically, whenever we activate our uh, ability, uh, our um, 
leader's ability, she jumps out of the deck. Very useful stuff. A lot of power. Uh, a lot of tempo. Oh, well, doesn't really matter. That's what, 20 scrap, I believe? I don't remember, I believe it's 20. Uh -huh. Well, let's get third week of our novice, because uh, we have one premium. Okay, eight to go, and so we are going to review what we have, uh, what is the more or less state of collection you can expect. Okay, so third Imperial Golem, definitely. And how much uh, scrap you would, uh, you would get. Um, okay, so we don't have a um, Hawker support. In this case, I think I'll just get a sec. Ah, okay, yeah. Let's let's get focus support. We'll get Necker wires later anyway. One eighty to go. We haven't been very lucky with legendary spear, I think. Uh, just under one every fifteen kegs or so, which is. Uh, uh, Around the amount people uh, people say it is, so. uh, but I guess that's uh, that gives us a nice uh, nice overview what an average uh, a person with average luck uh, ca can expect. Uh, all right, so th this is interesting. Uh, so we have uh, Zoltan, Animal Tamer. Uh, very useful neutral card that uh, uh, I can. Uh, so you basically spawn Field Marshal Duda Companion or Field Marshal Duda Agitator. Uh, companion you play on your side of the board and uh, he's uh, one strength parrot. And uh, basically, uh, all the units, uh, two units, two adjacent units of on each side get buffed by two and uh, agitator two uh, you play on the enemy side two adjacent uh, units on either side of him get uh, damaged by two so uh, it's gonna, there are a lot of ways to uh, to utilize that, that, that little guy uh, and he also is a dwarf so you can um, put him into a dwarven deck and yeah i think he will be he would be actually more useful in dwarven deck than hair to be honest, because I mean, if you have like four dwarves on on the board, that's what ten ten strength calls. You you are better off having Geralt, to be honest. But perhaps you will get buffed later down the line. Uh, Madeline Lucas, though, uh, this is a new 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 ability, and I think I want to try it out in a in a discard deck. So you. I'm sorry, uh, you discard a bronze unit from the deck and damage uh, a unit by discarded unit's power. Base power. So, um, yeah, seems like a very powerful card for a discard deck. Uh, both both those options are great. If you are not as into uh, scaling discards as I am, definitely go, go for Zoltan. Frankly, I'm probably, uh, I'm probably going to, to craft Zoltan. Shortly. Could have sworn we've taken second Necro Warrior. Well, I guess not. Hmm. Vanguard, since we have four spotters right now. Now 
Uh, and the third necro wire. Oh, damn. I not noticed. And, well, doesn't really matter. Alright, back to the shop. And let's see our cards collection. And you have now 160, probably another 200 and a bit uh, with, uh, for the cards that you have uh, premium versions of uh, uh, cards that you have. Uh, okay, let's let's filter it. Only commons and rares. Uh, standard only. Uh, we don't have one of the Drum and Shindled Maidens, but well, we have uh, the additional uh, versions of, of the other ones. So we, are, we basically have at least one uh, one copy of uh, uh, of each of those. And let's see how many things we don't have. Uh, let's go to rares. How many things we're missing a third third bit? Uh, nothing problematic. I guess we want a third uh, Axeman. Mm, all of that is okay. I guess we want third Harpy. And third Vanguard, I suppose. Mm. I guess here we have four so Shield Maiden, so that's alright. Uh, we have two uh, all of the premium ones, so that doesn't matter. We want one more Kedwini support and I guess one more Smuggler. And those I don't think you need. You need three. Um, yeah. So uh, after a month of play, uh, if you haven't uh, milled uh, things randomly, you should be more or less uh, set on everything. Uh, can we sort by the amounts? Nope, we cannot. So uh, everything has at least three copies, I believe. Can see anything that doesn't uh yeah so definitely all the commons yep so uh we're set on commons and definitely and almost fully set on rare so i would uh, rather uh, i would shy away from from crafting them what i'm going to do now is uh, cut the video i will quickly open the rest of uh, that off stream because well uh <laughs> that, that's enough. I don't think you, you guys want to watch it uh, anymore. So, <laughs> and we will. Uh, well, those who are interested in how how things would look. Uh, oh, actually, let's uh, let's check how many uh, how many rares and whatnot, how many premiums and and golds. But it's not premiums and golds, but uh, okay, all owned. Well, some of those are, as you can see, the on the leaders, but uh, well, we have one, two, three, one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven uh, cards that we picked out of the kegs. Uh, not bad. Uh, or ten, I believe. I'm not sure if I counted card here. Let's see, here's a starter card. Uh, epics. Well, quite a lot. Uh, although maybe not not so much. Well, uh, as I mentioned, uh, thanks for watching. I will cut into uh, the situation when everything is open, so we'll see how the things look after 300 cakes. If you are per chance interested, cheers. All right, I'm back. Actually, it has been two days because I uh, never had time to actually record. But I haven't bought any cards, so uh, having milled uh, all the spare ones, let me actually, I wrote it down. So, uh, results were from all the kegs uh, 21 uh, golds, and two of them were, uh, let's go to the golds, two of them were. Uh, 
uh, her premium. Uh, right, Jennifer, Jennifer Conjurer. This is like, once I finish recording, I got her in like a next keg. So <laughs> that was nice. And uh, earlier it was the extra. So uh, those two. Uh, I got 53 different uh, epics and uh, 14 I had to mill. Uh, at least four of them because I actually picked uh, that's uh, I actually picked uh, things that I had already in a standard version because I've gotten uh, a premium one. So like actually all all, all three of those. So I already had a, a grave hug, but I picked her anyway. Same goes with Skellige Storm and same goes with Decoy. So well, if not for that, I would have uh, I had an option to pick some other things. So that would be what. Uh, 56 different uh, different epics and of course we have uh, uh, the oh, damn it uh, and of course we have a full set of uh, rares and commons I think like uh, after opening like 150 which is uh, if you count it uh, around uh, um, just above a month uh, of playing free to play. Uh, I think at 150 something, I got the last uh, last rare that I needed uh, to to have uh, three of each. So it wasn't all that uh, all that bad. But, uh, it was like one something that uh, well nothing nothing useful. So uh, well, that definitely you can get all the commons and rares within like 20 days of. Playing free to play, I would say, and uh, well, if you if you were to buy like sixty kegs, uh, as I explained earlier, that would be like after a week or ten days of actually doing dailies, you should uh, have enough. Uh, you should have all the all the rares, save perhaps uh, a handful, but uh, yeah, uh, probably uh, everything that you actually need at the moment, and uh, you will feel feel the rest while playing. Uh, playing the decks. I will do the so uh, that's what nine thousand five hundred scraps. Uh, that's actually like uh, two more days of playing. So uh, there probably have been like a few more kegs than three hundred in it. So that's uh, but still that's what uh, uh, forty uh, seven uh, epics. I can craft forty seven epics and. Uh, so that would be actually enough to, to, to craft all the epics there are, which kind of uh, not owned. Uh, standard close, well, uh, 45, but I have four. Yeah, so I, I'm missing 41 epics. Of course, I, I don't want all of them, and I'm not going to, to craft all the epics, but yeah, there, there are some. Uh, that was, it was actually annoying because I, I, it took me a while to get around to actually recording this bit, but uh, so I will do the uh, videos on what to craft for for each faction, just like uh, what kind of uh, cards are the most important. Um, definitely take a look at mages. That, that, that that's for now. Mages and uh, things that lock. Those are usually uh, epics. Uh, if you are playing a faction and want to focus it, those are good starters because they fit in pra practically in every deck. Perhaps they're not the best there, not, not most fitting, but they will do their job. And more often than not, then they are actually the best thing you can uh, put in such a deck. But uh, I mean, uh, I will do the whole, uh, what probably a tier list or at least what to craft from, uh, from each faction uh, if you are starting. So thanks for watching guys and I will see you next time.